Hey everyone, we're going to do a timing chain tensioner fix for an S2000. It's a common problem, sounds like the bicycle and spokes sound, it's a rattling, it's horrible, sounds like your car is going to blow up. It's a very common problem, I've had it twice since I've had my S, it's a 2005 with 80,000 miles. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Uh, I'm just going to go through it really quick, it's real simple. Uh, first thing you're going to need is the tensioner itself off of your car, I've already taken mine off. And sorry, there you go. That's the whole assembly. It's still dirty. I'll take it apart. I'll show you the more details in a moment. Uh, you need a 10 millimeter deep well socket. Uh, shallow well will work, but deep well makes it a little bit easier. 3 8 drive ratchet to go with it. You need a regular Dremel. It doesn't matter what kind you get. That'll do the trick. Uh, you also will need... Ignore that spring. That's something I forgot to put back in. Uh, you also need a Dremel sanding disc. It's an 80 grit sanding disc. Uh, they're real common. Uh, you just put it on backwards so that the sanding face is up onto the bit that goes with it. Then you need a bolt. I'll put a little bubble somewhere around here that'll tell you what bolt this is. I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment. And a wing nut. And you'll see how that works in a moment. And then there's also the two 10 millimeter bolts that were holding the tensioner to the uh, car. Uh, that's everything you need. Alright, next up I'm going to show you how to take the tensioner apart. Uh, it's very simple, it literally will fall apart. You probably already figured that one out the hard way. Most importantly, I'll be able to show you how it goes back together. Alright, this is the comp entire assembly. You got the plunger sticking out one side. Make sure your seals are good, mainly this o-ring right here. Uh, there's the plate on the back. I also recommend while this is on the car breaking these two bolts loose it Just makes it a little bit easier than trying to do it while it's in your hand um, All right, let's go and take it apart when you pull it apart the whole thing will mostly come apart There is in order There's this large spring right here There is the worm drive, which is actually your trouble part Then you've got the inner spring smaller one nothing complicated then you got this pin. This actually goes into the end of that spring. And then you have the plunger itself. So pretty much one, two, three, four, five, and into the main body assembly here. And then also when you're taking it apart, go ahead and take these two nuts off. It's pretty simple. Make sure you don't get these bolts mixed up with the ones that hold it to the car because they are different. Alright, so that's the side. This plate just pops off after that. See a little bit of oil under there, that's normal. And then the last part you'll want to take out is going to be this little screw right here. You just take it out with a standard flat head. Just because I've got this handy, I'm going to use the actual tool that comes with my Dremel. Shouldn't be in there very tight. Maybe I lied. Alright, never mind. I'm just going to use a regular screwdriver, but it's very simple. It just unscrews, it's just a plug. You're going to take that out with a flat head. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the repair. Once you got the whole thing apart, set all the other pieces to the side, make sure they don't roll away or anything like that. Uh, you'll have the worm drive, which like I said earlier, this is your actual problem here. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take that bolt that I mentioned earlier with the wing nut on it. Wing nut's not as important at this moment, but I use this as kind of a handle. This helps me do what we're going to do. One end of the worm drive, you'll see, has a threaded hole in it. You're just going to go ahead and put that bolt into that hole. It should only turn a couple turns and then it'll, you'll feel it bind up. And it's just two or three threads probably. And then just make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and turn that wing nut down. And lock it into place. All right. So you got the wing nut in place. Now with that bolt end in, I want you to, you're going to hold it up like this. And the idea behind this is when you look at the worm drive, it's got these smooth teeth on it, and that is your problem. Uh, they get too smooth, they don't create enough friction in the oil surface, or with the oil going across the surface, to put pressure on the plunger and push against the timing chain tensioner to keep it tight. And that's what you hear is the chain rattling left and right. So all we're going to do is knock this surface back off. Like I said, on the Dremel, we've got that 180 sandpaper. And you're just going to take it, hold it up here like this. Take your Dremel, put it on medium speed. You're not going to be able to hear me talk with the Dremel on, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you. The main idea behind this is with your, like I said, with it facing up like this, and the disc down is you're going to take and just walk that disc down and turn this piece. 
So you get all this surface. The bottom surface does not matter. Don't worry about that. Just this top surface. And you're just going to work it back and forth until you have like kind of a rough looking surface all the way around. Be careful not to stay in one place too long and flat edge it and try your best not to sand this outside actual lip. You're just going for these topmost surfaces here. And you're of course going to drag over the top. The edges a little bit shouldn't affect it. Like I said, 80,000 miles. This is my second time doing it. Uh, that's it. I'm going to do it now. Get an idea. should do it. Wipe it off. You know, you don't want any metal debris or anything in your engine. But, I don't know if you can tell that well. I would zoom in, but I'm using a fixed lens. So, you get the idea. Just rough up the surface. Take away that that sheen that it'll have on it. Alright. So that's that. And then, of course, you can just pop this bolt back out. It's pretty simple. Alright. I'm going to show you how to reassemble this whole assembly. Uh, you're going to take that bolt from earlier. Go ahead and turn that wing nut pretty far. Uh, the bolt. No, this bolt's probably about, I think it was two inches of thread or so. You can take that there, set this here. You got your plunger from earlier. A lot of people will clean it up and take all the oil out, but if you don't see any debris, I recommend leaving oil in it. Uh, that way just everything's pre-lubricated. Or you can just spray it out, clean it, and then just put a couple drops of oil on everything. That's your choice. You can use assembly lube too. Alright, so you've got this. Make sure, like I said, you got that back plate off. Make sure you've taken this plug here out of this hole. It's just a flathead screw, nothing crazy. All right, from this side, put the large spring in first. Doesn't matter which direction it goes into. Then you're going to take and put the plunger side together. Now for this, you take the pin to begin with. You take the little spring, again, direction does not matter. Slide it back over that pin there. Then you're gonna go ahead and put that into the plunger. Then, make sure you see it here. Then you're going to take your piece, your worm drive that you messed with earlier. It's got a large end. That large end goes over the spring. Now, it's going to actually screw into the plunger and you'll feel it compressing that spring on the inside. And it should feel a little rough if you cleaned your oil out. And uh, that's because you know you got this rougher surface from before. And then just with it loosely put together, you know, it's not going to stay in because that spring is pushing it back out. But I can get it to stay in there pretty good, just like this. And uh, you're going to take that, screw it in like you can, leave that big spring in there, and just put the assembly together as one. Now, push it down, and it should stop. And then, once you've got it pushed down, you just keep turning it. It's kind of tricky. I'll show you here. You keep turning it, and it'll screw that worm drive in while inside. Get it down about halfway, then that plug you took out earlier, you can get this bolt down in there and it'll screw into the plunger. So what you do is you put that together like this. You'll see actually it's turning that plunger now. And I can actually take the wing nut, butt it back against this plate. Hopefully you can see. And then you're just gonna turn this while putting pressure. Make sure you're putting pressure like a needle. And then turning this little nut, it's very easy to turn, and you'll actually see the plunger is going down. And this wing nut, you just tighten it back up, holds it in place. Just a little bit further. It usually gets down to this flat edge here, just about a sixteenth of an inch or so. You don't have to get it all the way down because it, it'll, it'll rest against the tensioner. So that's what you'll have put together to go on the car. Alright, so you have an idea of where we're going to be working. I started back here. I'm going to set the camera down here. Alright, we're going to take that tensioner from earlier and we'll put it back into the car. You're going to need your 10 millimeter socket and your wrench again. That should be pretty easy if you're mechanically inclined. You got your tensioner and assembly bolt again. I'm going to hold it down here in the light so you can see where it's in focus. It's that whole assembly we put together. All right, you're going to take it. I would lubricate those rings. Mine are still oily, so you just go ahead and slide it back into the block as so. And this will only line up one way, so you have to snap it into the block, make sure your bolt holes all line up. I, of course, put mine in backwards. So you just pop it back out, wiggle it around. There we go. Make sure it's the correct direction. There we go. Go ahead and put your two bolts in. 
And mind you, this may look a little bit different than your car. I have the Gretti turbo set up on my. All right, so got your two bolts in. It's lined up. Should be very easy to reinstall this. And as long as your plunger is screwed down like we showed before, you should have no issues getting this tightened up and it's sitting flush against the block. I should also mention that if you have an NA car, I highly recommend taking out the air box for this. It makes your life a million times easier. Alright, it's tight. That's tight. Don't over tighten those that are screwing into an aluminum block. Remember that. Alright, very easy after this. Remember our wing nut that we installed earlier and the small bolt? It's time for that to just come out. It's, uh, it's pressed up against the chain on the inside of the car, so you, this has no relevance anymore. So you just loosen your wing nut and then turn the big bolt. Just want to take a couple turns and slide it straight out. Once you've got that out, so your plug goes in, screws in like normal. And I don't have a flathead as to the side, so a moment. I unfortunately don't have any small screwdrivers, so I have a screwdriver bit in a socket here. Let me use that to tighten this up. Does not have to be that tight. Just kind of snug fit. There we go. And that's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing difficult. Got that in. We're gonna switch back over to our 10 mil socket. Then you should have the two small bolts and the plate. Again, this plate only goes on one direction. Make sure you put the plate on in the right direction because it can the bolts will still go in even if you have it on the right wrong way. I've done that in the dark before, and you will have a mess. It will leak oil. You will lose oil pressure, and you don't want that. So you put that in. It's just two small 10 millimeter bolts. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way so you can see, but it's kind of the only direction I can get to it. And as far as an NA car, you'll just put your air box and all back in. Um, I am boosted, but I'm not going to actually put my charge pipe back in yet and my uh, my intake pipe yet because I want to crank it up and check it. Now, I'll warn you, when you go to crank it up right after this, since you just dried out a lot of the oil that's in the tensioner, it will rattle for the first few seconds until it builds oil pressure. That's completely normal.